If there is a security incident in your organization, then it's important to know exactly the process to follow to get the forensics associated with that incident. You want to be sure you're collecting as much data as possible so that you can then examine it afterwards. There is a guideline for this. RFC 3227 is the guideline for evidence collection and archiving. And if you're looking for some best practices on what to do if you have a security incident, this would be a great place to start. There's a standard process for obtaining these digital forensics. You have to have a way to acquire the information, analyze it, and then finally report on what you found. And it requires somebody has a lot of detail for what they're doing. You have to have a lot of notes and a lot of documentation to make sure that you have all of the information you need for that particular incident. There's a concept in digital forensics called the order of volatility. And that's because not all data sticks around for the same amount of time. Data ages out depending on where it happens to be in a system. You can get an example of this from this chart. One of the most volatile, one of the most short-lived types of data are within the memory and the registers of your processors themselves. The cache has data that's only going to be there for a very short period of time. A routing table, an ARP cache, a process table, memory information is also not quite as volatile as something in your CPU cache. But again, it's only around for a short period of time, and it's often updated. From there, a little bit less volatile type of data might be temporary file systems. You could power down a computer and preserve at least some of that. But if your operating system is running, it often overwrites some of those temporary file systems. Information on disk is there until we do something with it. So we're getting less and less volatile data. Remote logging data is sent outside of that computer system. So it's data that might be around for a very long time, the physical configuration, and finally, the archival media you might have are the least volatile. And as you're gathering information and forensics about a particular security incident, you need to make sure you gather the most volatile information first and work your way down the list. There are things you can do with a security incident to preserve some of this data. One common way is to image an entire hard drive. Take every bit on that hard drive and copy it somewhere else. This is a good example of a portable product that you can use to plug in an external hard drive, plug in a SATA drive, a PATA drive, and copy every single bit of that information off to a separate machine. You also want to look at network traffic. You want to look at the logs of what's going across your network. Look at your routers and your switches and your firewalls to see if you can gather information that way. There may be videos. If you have a way to look at video systems that you have set up, make sure you go back to those tapes. And of course, at the scene of the incident, you may want to take video and pictures yourself. There are files that you can grab from these systems that you may want to use later. And to prove that there's been no tampering to that file, you may want to create a hash of that file. So that way you know later on if you're trying to prove that this was the original file, you have the hash that you're able to combine with that. And there might be witnesses who saw someone walk in the door, they identified a stranger inside of the organization, or they saw the incident occur on that particular computer. And providing interviews of those people can have a document that later on you can use even if it's months or even years later.